know whether it was longest two or three weeks, but it was in that region of time. And that was when we received the, again, fairly infamous in discussion, redacted letters from investors which robbed us of any ability to identify who those investors were and what their credit status was. Smoke and mirrors. Those letters were passed to the barrister for assessment. The barrister returned with uh, their opinion on the value of those letters on, uh, 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 on the 1st of September in a telephone conference we held with him. And that information was forwarded to me in writing on 3rd of September. So when uh, the legal officer and myself travelled to London for the third formal meeting with River Oak on the 4th of September, I had a independent barrister's legal opinion of what I should ask for and why. At that meeting on the 4th of September, we agreed with River Oak to uh, have a period of, I think what's been termed a radio silence, where we would neither of us be making statements separately about what the situation was. And we agreed to have two lines of work, one undertaken by River Oak, one undertaken by the District Council and its officers or agents. And the lines of work were that uh, River Oak would actually, this is in the minutes of that meeting, take the government circular 06-2004, which is the guiding principle of how you undertake a CPO, and actually demonstrate to us, paragraph by paragraph, how they met the tests within that particular circular. The reason we asked for that was twofold and straightforward, apart from the barrister's advice. The first was, I felt, and we all felt in discussion here, that it should rapidly demonstrate where the two sides were in agreement, and fairly rapidly demonstrate where we had a difference of opinion. The second reason we asked for that was, that if we were coming to a cabinet meeting like this in the not too distant future in order to approve River Oak as an indemnity partner, it would provide the basis of the argument we would have to put down in terms of showing how and where they fulfilled the requirements of the government circular and were therefore capable of being an appropriate indemnity partner for the purposes of CPA. In return, we were asked to forward our comments on the draft indemnity partnership agreement. The last iteration of that before that date had been issued by River Oak on the 6th of July. It was not something that was hugely high up on our particular list because my understanding uh, that I got from the, the, the legal uh, guys who looked at this was this was a fairly standard document that did not contain anything unusually contentious. But even so, we followed that through and we put forward our comments on that particular document as part of our line of work. It was agreed that both of those lines of work should be completed by the 30th of September in any event. I had two or three phone calls with George Errol over the intervening period and on, uh, and it would be I think Friday the 18th of September in one of those phone calls Mr. Yarrow asked if the date on which we were going to exchange that information could be brought forward until the 22nd of September. On the 22nd of September, our solicitors in London awaited for the exchange. It did not happen. On the 23rd of September, getting a bit fed up with waiting, our solicitors sent to Rag Lawrence Graham, River Oak solicitors, our particular line of work. On the 24th of September, River Oak actually sent their uh, line of work back to us and uh, it was dated the 23rd of September the day before. And it was not in the form that we asked for. It was a reiteration of the previous arguments we had heard from River Oak as to why they met some of the tests of the circular but actually completely missed any uh, approach to the public interest tests which is something that would be a fundamental concern to anyone entering a CPA. We asked in a we asked in a conversation held shortly afterwards 
if River Oak would complete that document and would actually include the public interest test in what they said and well, as, as assured by Mr Yarrell that that would be done. We did not agree a time limit for that alteration but I would have to say I expected it to come fairly quickly. Mr Yarrell then also raised issues regarding our uh, context of uh, the comments we made on the indemnity partnership agreement and in particular the provision of a bond or surety at different stages of the process. He was particularly concerned about the revaluation periods of the bond <coughs> and whether or not the bond or surety uh, could actually be put in uh, in the, the, the right spot he felt in the process or whether it should come at a different stage in the process and in addition and we had a, 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 an interesting fun conversation about how long River Oak were going to need between the granting of the CPO, which is two years in by mutual agreement and all understanding, to the point where they will be able to vest or actually take control of the land. We had asked because we always had the aim of making this process move forward as quickly as we humanly could, that that period of time should be shortened. We suggested four months we probably would have accepted six months or a year. Mr. Yarrell insisted at that point and has insisted since that the full three years the law would allow was the only date that they were willing to put into the indemnity agreement. That, that means, in practice, that we may have been looking at no aeroplanes in the sky for anything up to five and a half years beyond the point at which this, the, the whole elements of the CPO had started. Sorry. 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 Following another a conversation or two, Mr. Yarrell then asked if I would provide directly to him where, he, he, where we felt the liabilities that would occur in this process were occurring and where we felt they hadn't covered it. I did that by email. I did it directly from me because he asked me directly for it. But as he himself commented and spotted, it didn't sound like me, it sounded more like a lawyer. True. We actually asked for legal advice on that particular point. At this point, Mr. Yarrell decided that it would be to River Oak's advantage if he made a number of things public, and there followed a period in which a good deal of publicity was attached to a number of website announcements, a number of responses and letters, some of which were legally inaccurate, some of which were uh, later denied, I think the best example of that is paragraph 327 of the report, which says quite clearly that all bond and security had been withdrawn, and yet as of yesterday, Mr. Yarrell was telling us they were still in the original indemnity agreement. Well, of course it was. But Mr. Yarrell had stated quite publicly, no bond ever. At this point... It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. At this point, I think we took the view that relations between River Oak and ourselves had reached a point where actually it did not feel that they would be a comfortable indemnity partner for our purpose. We then set about a drafting a report in order to demonstrate where and how, as a council, we felt we had taken the best approaches and given the best opportunities for River Oak to present their case, bearing in mind that River Oak had had the best part of 18 months to prepare what they needed to put into the arena. And you wasted it. Mm -hmm. There are two other things I would like to say and make clear. The 
The first is, what we are discussing tonight is not whether or not we have a compulsory purchase order at Manston Airport. We are discussing tonight whether or not River Oak have effectively passed the tests that we have been legally advised to undertake to be the appropriate indemnity partner in such a project. Yes. Secondly, one of the things that has puzzled me personally, I think puzzled many of our legal advisors about this whole process, is the relative artificiality of the division of the different steps of this process, stage by stage, from start to finish. By which I mean, we have money, welcome money, in an account, ready to go into an escrow account, in order to undertake the CPO. But at that point, there has to be a pause while investors are approached and to find money to mm -hmm. undertake the CPO. No. And no. At, no. To undertake, no. sorry, beg your mind, no. to undertake the vesting of the land. And I suppose, in a sense, our issue with that, and it is backed by our legal advice, is pretty simple, is that that is an artificial separation of the stages of the process. Our aim is to get the end of the process which creates a working airport as quickly as we humanly can in the context of there being no residual cost to the council. The separation of those stages... Is it the government it, documentation? The separation of those stages <coughs> is that it elongates the process, which strikes against our intention to do this as rapidly as possible. And secondly, that it creates a lesser mm -hmm. test for the indemnity partner to actually deal with those stages separately than deal with them all the way through. I have often been asked, where are the risks here? And the first risk is very straightforward. It occurs before any compulsory purchase order is actually applied for. Because in the government circular, it is quite clear. The acquiring authority has to, in part of what it does in preparation, make an attempt to buy the land without going through the, 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 the principle of a compulsory purchase process. It is reasonable, if we are the acquiring authority, for us to ask River Oak, who is the indemnity partner, are providing the money, what safeguards and what ability and guarantee they have to make that money available rapidly if a reasonable offer for the purchase price comes forward. River Oak have given us no comfort on that point whatsoever, and indeed have tried to substitute their own previous attempts to buy the airport in place of the government circulars request. Let them speak. Secondly, in order to see the whole process through, the government circulars requires that we have a view of reasonable certainty of funding through the whole process. The letter of credit that was promised on the 3rd of July fulfilled that absolutely. Its withdrawal and reduction to a much less certain position leaves us without being able to say that that certainty of funding is in place. I'd remind you all, the process that we're indulging here is actually not to undertake a CPO, it is to retain a working, operating airport. Mm. Yeah. I would like to move recommendations 8 1. Having reviewed its position, details of which are contained in this report, that no further action be taken at the present time on a CPO at Manston Airport on the basis that River Oak do not fulfil the requirements of the Council for Indemnity Partner. 8.2. Cabinet note that this is the second time that River Oak have not fulfilled the requirements of the Council for an indemnity partner. Right. I move the recommendation. As seconded by Councillor Shara Smoking. I said I have a, a number of Unsurprisingly, a number of speakers under uh, Rule 24.1. Can I remind members when they are making their contributions that it is a uh, understood protocol of uh, uh, 
of this chamber that we are talking and commenting and asking questions on the report, not about the entire process of uh, a CPO or whatever. And secondly, that if a uh, speaker asks the question you were going to ask, can we please not have repetitive questions uh, through the evening? Otherwise, we might be here some considerable time. Okay. There we are. Wow. Um, what am I first speaker I have on my list is uh, Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, may I make one comment briefly before I put my question, which is to say that I personally am not comfortable with the process that we have witnessed here, whereby River Oak have not been invited to give any account to the points which have been raised. We have been encouraged to be unbiased when terms such as predetermination have been written to us by officers of this council. I do not find this gathering 